Hello and welcome to D and Daily number thirty-six. I'm Gregory. This is one in twenty D and D, and this is take three. So I'm gonna try to get through this all in one fell swoop here. Let's see if I can pull it off this time without any interruptions. So hey, how are you today? I I've got something. I'm wearing my Jocks Machina shirt today, just coincidentally. I am about halfway through the most current Critical Role, and that it, they're just getting into Jorhas, if you know what that means, if you follow the show. Uh, and I, I basically, they just started the second half of the session I'm watching. <laughs> oh, excuse me, from last week. And here's, here's what's on my mind, what's been on my mind for a couple days. I have friends, and I've heard other people complain that they feel like this second campaign, this second season or whatever of Critical Role feels overly produced. And it's, I guess it's sort of a problem for them. So I've been trying to figure out like, well, what does that mean? Like, what's the problem? Why is it, why is that an issue? Because it obviously is for some people. And what does that even mean? So, and, and so it's been kind of going through my head. And in the last couple of days, I've, I've talked about some new games that are out there that, on the interwebs that you can go check out, like The Chain, like Relics and Rarities, and these other shows. And, you know, The, the Chain is brand new. It's friends at a table making D&D content, playing a game. And that's what Critical Role is. The thing about it is, like, they you know, um, Matthew Mercer and the Critical Role crew have been doing this for a couple years. Plus, they're professional actors, all of them. So I feel like, on a certain level, their performance, and let's just say their gameplay, really, feels more polished. And maybe that's true because they're, like I just said, they're professionals. So I would hope that they would be more polished in their characters. They've also had quite a while to develop their characters. And, at, you know, when an actor gets to know a certain character, it's very easy for them to think and act and speak as that character. That's their job. So these people who happen to be playing D&D and letting us watch their game, they're slick, they're good, they're, they're, you know? And not only that, Matthew Mercer is a freaking amazing DM. I mean, he is spot on, he's spontaneous, he's able to snap from one voice to another, he's very skilled because he's been doing it for a long time and he's developed a certain style. See, I, I've kind of noticed from the very beginning, I think, of this show that Matthew Mercer has a style of pushing the game. Like He doesn't allow for like lag time, looking up rules and, and long, ex like really extended long turns and that kind of stuff. He like, he'll goose the players to get them moving to keep the story flowing. Which is interesting. He's got a very interesting and, and wonderful narrative style. That's his style. Now, if I look at Matthew Colville, who has just started The Chain, and they're streaming. He's done others, but this is the one I'm, I'm most familiar with because I haven't really watched the others. The, his style is way more laid back. Equally skilled as a DM. is not a trained professional actor, so his... His voices, or his personas, his NPCs have a slightly different feel, but they're convincing and engaging and entertaining nonetheless. But his style is way more, at least right now, way more like we're just a bunch of friends hanging out at a table playing d and So if we have a rules question, we're probably going to look it up, unless it seems like it's taken too long. And that's cool. I like that. I like that style. I like both styles for different reasons. So that's brand new. That's like just out. Now, Relics and Rarities is brand new as well. But wow, same kind of thing. I think they edit, at least the ones I've seen. I didn't watch it live, so I'm not sure 
what what the live version is but the one i saw on youtube it was pretty heavily produced there there's like there's sound effects and there's like they they edit and that kind of stuff so it it sort of slightly changes the flow of the game uh you know they're cutting from camera to camera and that kind of stuff it's not just like this stream kind of setting where you just you just see the game as it's playing out without edits it it's a much that was a much more produced game but still again entertaining so i think what's happening here here's my here's my summary my analysis i guess as i think this out and kind of play it out right now this is what i've been sort of doing in my own mind the last couple of days and now i'm i'm sort of talking it out to f to figure it out and, and what i feel right now in this moment is that like we're seeing different styles of games and different styles of content game content role playing game content D&D content so like you know my so like from one game to another even with the same group there's going to be a slightly different feel you know from one campaign to the next hopefully if you have a good DM cuz there's going to be a different tone you know and now that people are we're coming to this age where people are starting to share their games like show the world like this is how we play D&D you know from dice camera action acquisitions incorporated actually acquisitions incorporated were some of the first shows that I got exposed to on YouTube that's where I kind of started was with acquisitions inc then I heard about or found out about or saw some other stuff that I kind of was like, oh, this is interesting. Mostly people playing on Roll20 because I was trying to learn more about Roll20. And then that rolled into finding out about Critical Role. And then when Dice Camera Action started, I started watching that because I started DMing and I started watching a lot of these shows to like see, well, how do I become a better DM? I want to be a better DM, so let me watch a couple of other DMs and see what their style is, what their techniques are. Because for a very, very long time, like 20-ish years, I had one DM. He's amazing. My GM, Brett, is awesome. He's incredible. But he has his style, right? And I shouldn't say but. He's incredible, and he's got his own style, right? His style of play is way different than... All these cats I keep talking about, and it's way different than my style as a DM, right? So, I think that's part of what's seeing, and there's this, you know, there's a natural ebb and flow. I, it's cool if people get bored with a show. Hey, that's fine. Move on. Find something else that suits your fancy. I am still fully engaged and entertained with the story of the Mighty Nine. I just find it. I think it's amazing. Maybe that's because I love acting. I, I've studied acting. I've studied film. I've, I, I have an appreciation for their craft and the fact that they're playing D&D and telling a really cool, interesting story. It still appeals to me. It, it does, for me, it doesn't feel produced, like overly produced. It is. like They spend a lot of time with like their intros and they've, they've put money into like creating a format and and Matt puts tons of effort into, like, creating the scenery for his battlescape. You know, his battle mats are incredible because they're actually, you know, they're using, like, Dwarven Forge and they're using all this, this scenery to create a, a, an actual visual, which I love. I played, like, Warhammer Fantasy and, and Warhammer role play, uh, tabletop games, like 40K and all this, tabletop battle simulations where it's, like, armies against armies. And so for me... Seeing the miniatures and the, the little tiny trees and bushes and rocks and, and landscape and buildings and all that stuff is awesome. Matt Colville's using it in his, but not as extensively. And I've seen other, I've seen both. I've seen really great games run with like incredible set scenery game mats. And then you have like Dice Camera Action who never has a battle map ever. They, they are only theater of the mind and both are for me both are interesting so i'm still struggling with it i don't know what do you think i mean do you like it do you think it's overly 
produced? Is it maybe that it just doesn't have the feel it did way at the beginning where it was new and exciting and they weren't real sure? Maybe it's the maybe it's the players. Maybe it's the actors like being now they're more conscious of the fact like hey, we're producing this. We're 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 acting. We're on. We're like when they're sitting down to t play a game, they're not just sitting down to play a game. They're like switching into their on like as if they're acting, even though it's long form, even though it's improv, they're still kind of like switching on their, their actor persona and, and acting instead of playing. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. What do you think? I'd love to hear your feedback, your thoughts. Share it with me through comments, direct messages. You can find me on Twitter and all that great stuff. I have a game tonight that I'm excited about running. I can't wait. Our players are now level two, which is fun. It's so much fun for me to be starting so fresh and new characters and all that stuff. I can't wait to see where they go. I'll see you at the next time. I can't wait to see you at a table. Someday, I hope. I'd love to see it. Virtual tables are great, too. And until then, keep rolling 20s.